If you're a huge fan of boxing, you definitely must have come across the name Gennady Golovkin. Cause that man has made quite a mark in the industry. In fact, he has so many fans that whenever he's scheduled to fight in the ring, everyone knows it's going to be a great match. So to her luck, Gennady Golovkin will be fighting real soon against Japanese professional boxer Ryota Murata, and we're going to take a closer look at what we can expect from it. So much time left. He is hurt badly. Murata's all over him here in round two. Oh, and he sends This fight is scheduled to take place at the Saitama Super Arena in Japan on the 9th of April, 2022. Gennady will be defending his IBF and IBO middleweight titles in this match and will also be aiming for the WBA Super Middleweight title. On that note, let's take a look at both Gennady's and Ryota's past fights to understand their fighting styles and to know what we can expect in the ring on that day. We'll first take a quick look at a few matches that Gennady has fought. Gennady has fought a total of 43 matches and has lost just once out of all these matches. To top this off, 36 of Golovkin's wins have been by a knockout. It was the, it was the Golovkin left hand. He has been a part of the boxing scene for a decade and a half now, which makes him quite an experienced boxer. Gennady's last fight was against Camille Zarameta, and it ended in the seventh round. Golovkin was dominating the match right from the moment the opening bell was sounded, and always kept great range with his opponent so as to open up plenty of opportunities to throw in his many combination punches as well as jabs. Initially, Golovkin's jabs were connecting pretty well and Zerometa was not able to counter that back with anything significant. After a while of going back and forth, Golovkin threw in a left hook that sent Zerometa to the floor for the first time in this match. For a second. Oh, what a left hand! Sends Zerometa down! Just like Jeez. that! The second round of this match saw Golovkin throwing in plenty of power punches that were accompanied by jabs. These power shots seemed to be damaging Zerometa, and when Golovkin saw an opening, he threw in an overhand right that sent Zerometa to the canvas for the second time. Zerometa was back on the canvas in round 4 due to Golovkin's well-timed multiple punch combinations that were not only lethal but pretty sharp too. A few rounds later, Golovkin's legendary double jab sent Zerometa to the floor of the ring for the fourth and final time. The referee decided to put a stop to the match and Golovkin won. Just outside shots, setting up his power punches. He's wasting nothing. And that was a that was a shot on the ear. That is a knockdown, an equilibrium punch. Another great match that Golovkin has fought was against Sergei Derevyanchenko. The match started with both boxers throwing in equally strong punches that included jabs. Golovkin threw in a six-punch combination that he punctuated with a right hook to Sergei's head. Sergei was down in the first round itself. A little bit. 160 pounds. He managed to hoist himself back on the canvas and continued to fight, even though he seemed to be quite intimidated. But this also seemed to motivate Sergi, as after that first round knockdown, he was back in his element and threw in quite a few shots of his own. The second round had Sergi throwing in three and four punch combinations alongside single and double jabs, while Golovkin was busy throwing in an occasional hook as well as single shots. Golovkin's left hook seemed to open up a cut over his opponent's right eye. As Golovkin with that jab. As he hits him again, the right hand after the jab. But later it was made clear that it was an accidental clash of heads that caused this cut to open up. Golovkin was quite aggressive in round three, and Sergi was not willing to back down either. Golovkin went into defense in this round, and Sergi took advantage of this by landing quite a few clean punches at Golovkin's head. Sergi was dominating the match for a few rounds, but Golovkin's shots were more significant. Round 10 saw Golovkin throwing in right hooks to Sergi's head, and Golovkin responded back with equally strong counters. The 11th and 12th rounds had quite a few great punches thrown at each other, and Golovkin won this match by unanimous decision, all thanks to the points that the judges had contributed to the scorecards. Found him, but he missed it. Uh, just a little bit. 160 pounds, 170 pounds. Made it on the second. Just a few months prior to this match, Golovkin had gone up against Canadian professional boxer Steve Rawls. This match was scheduled for 12 rounds, but Golovkin managed to end the match in the fourth round itself. The match started off slow, but 
Golovkin had this moment in round one. Rolls played safe on the defense and threw in a few punches which slowly built up his confidence. Rolls then managed to throw in a sharp left to Golovkin's head that snapped his head backward. This moment intimidated Golovkin but also had etched in his mind that he must retaliate and win the match. Golovkin went into lethal mode and started throwing in hooks and straight hands, the left rolls fighting with the high guard. The fourth round of this match saw Golovkin throwing in a loop left hook that landed on Roll's head, leaving Rolls in a wobbly state from which he never recovered. Rolls tried to hold on to his footing, but it not seemed to be working on his defense. Golovkin then hurled at Rolls blows from all angles and punctuated it with a left hook to Rolls' jaw that sent Rolls to the canvas with his face first to the floor of the ring. It was indeed quite a magnificent knockout win for Golovkin. Fighting Canelo Alvarez is no joke and when Gennady fought him a few years ago, he had to put forth his absolute best to make it through all the rounds. This is Gennady's only match so far that ended in a draw and it was quite a challenge for him too. Alvarez was aggressive right from the start and both the boxers started rather cautiously in round one. After studying each other's moves for a while, Golovkin tried to hurl a jab. Canelo retaliated back with plenty of his own counter punches. Canelo's punches were harder, faster and more explosive and Golovkin was trying very hard to keep up with them. Golovkin was still not able to throw in his famous jab and only started being active from round four. A counter right up and said they could have been very vicious, but he just missed. Good combination by Canelo and moves forward. Canelo dominated round six, seven, and eight, and Golovkin managed to stay in the match, fighting to the best of his abilities. Canelo was tired out, and Golovkin started taking advantage of this by landing a strong round of blows in the tenth round. In round eleven, Canelo was against ropes and Golovkin took advantage of the disadvantageous position that Canelo was in and made this round his best round of that match. Good pace on those. A guy, a guy like Canelo, a champion like Canelo, because he's not flush, but it lands. So does that jab. We've taken quite an intense look at Golovkin, so now let's take a look at Ryota Murata for a quick bet. Ryota has fought a total of 18 fights, of which he has won 16 matches. The last match that he fought was more than two years ago, and this has left us to wonder if this short sabbatical of his would affect his performance in the ring or not. Oh, yes. Ryota's fight with Stephen Butler was scheduled to last a good 12 rounds. Murata showcased his pristine power right from the start of the match, and Butler managed to counter back as well. Butler's combination punches were fast and his reach was long, giving him the advantage to throw in counters whenever an opportunity arose. Murata's offense was constant and his thunderous right hands and sharp jabs started to wear out his opponent. But round four, Butler was tired out. In the fifth round, Murata cornered Butler against ropes and unleashed a barrage of punches that he punctuated with left duck, sending Butler to the canvas. The referee intervened and halted the match, declaring Ryota the winner. In Ryota's match against Rob Brandt, things didn't go well the first time they met in the ring. However, the rematch that followed gave Ryota a great chance to prove himself in the ring, and that's what he did. This match, that was scheduled for a good 12 rounds, ended in the second round itself. Brandt was busy right from the start and was pretty confident as well, having won the first match that the two of them had fought. But Murata was determined to win this match, and he came to the center of the ring and pushed back Brandt with heavy blows. Both these boxers had plenty of connecting shots, and they barely missed. It wasn't an offensive, I'm here to take you out. Hunter right there. And there's a good right hand from Murata as Brandt is hurt. Brandt tried to After a while, Ryota's hands seemed to be the more damaging ones, and his two right hands that he sent in Brandt's direction left him in a stunned state. It was just a minute into round two when Murata hurled a right hand at Brandt that sent him into the ropes. Murata kept showering blows on Brandt. Plenty of these shots included right hands and left hooks from different angles, leaving Brandt confused. After a few seconds of being beaten, 
Brett tumbled backward, leading to the first knockdown of the match. Brett was not able to get back up, and it didn't even seem to put up in the effort to do so. He preferred to stay down and let Ryota win the match. So much time left. He is hurt badly. Murata is all over him here in round two. Oh, and he sends Moreover, both Gennady and Ryota are pretty skilled, and we have to wait for the big day to see who wins the match. So, are you Team Gennady Golovkin or Team Ryota Murata? Let's know in the comment section below. But he missed it uh, just a little bit. 160 pounds, 170 pounds. Made it on the second. Hope you enjoyed today's content. Make sure to subscribe to the home of boxing. See you very soon.